Hey everybody, welcome. It is story time, right? Um, I, I told you that at 20 subscribers, I would tell you a personal story and I am nothing if not true to my word. Um, we have about, I think 22 subscribers right now. Now I know, <laughs> I know there's a story that y'all wanna hear. And I promise that will probably be coming out eventually right now that the world is not ready for that story right so if you are coming in to hear that story that's not on tap today like that's not what we're teeing up right now um that's not to say that at some point down the line thousand two thousand followers uh that it might not be something that i can't imagine it's not something i don't talk about in the future but right now we're not gonna go to to that very recent past i would love to go as I'm talking about the present <laughs> this week, I would love to go to the the, the distant past um, because, well, that's where all of our memories are. That's where all of our stories come from, right? The past, and um, it is a, a fun a fun thing to to share with you how my own personal past really impacted my present at the time. Now it's like my my recent past. But, um, so I, I'm going to share with you this memory that is both a sort of a sad memory and also a, a pretty happy memory. Um, and I hope that you like it. So let's go back, guys. Let's go back to 2001. We've survived Y2K, right? Now, if you're watching this born in 2001 or after, you don't know about the havoc that was Y2K, right? You don't know about... Was it 2001? It was 2001. It was 2001. Okay, yeah. Because it was May 2001. So it wasn't 9-11 yet, right? 9-11 came September. It's, um, it was like May 2001. Yes, that's around the time it was. It was spring, right? Now we're remembering. Now the, the gray matters in here. So, um, I'm living in a small town with my mom, my sister, and my brother. And, uh, we, in the small town, I, I go to a five to eight school because I'm in sixth grade. So 20 years ago, I'm 11. It's 2001. We've survived Y2K. Everything's going on as normal. We don't know anything about September 11th yet. And so um, to put us in our temporal moment. So um, we're out in the playground. It's this big field, right? The playground at my school then, which has changed since because it's been 20 years. Um, it was just a big old grass field where we'd have like you know field day or whatever and we're just playing on it because fifth grade sixth grade I guess you still have recess and so I'm in, I'm in sixth grade I have friends I've lived in this school district for I don't know at that point I guess at least 10 years at least a decade and I get this sort of weird sense and I don't know if you ever had this I get this weird sense that something is amiss like there's something happening that i don't understand that i don't like what is going on weird vibe very strange because everybody's playing and i sort of feel like i'm on the outside of that right and also everybody's passing around this white paper but no one's passed it to me now i've always gone to small schools so there wasn't a lot of us in my great. I mean, it was a very, very, very small school. Um, I can't tell you how much I don't remember or have a yearbook right now. But I know it was smaller than the, the district I moved into the district I moved into I graduated with 72 kids. And it was smaller than that. Right. So because this the, the first school I went to didn't even have a high school, it only had elementary and middle schools. So it was small, let's say maybe like 50 kids. So you know everybody, everybody knows you. And um, they're running around, they're playing. I was fast, I was fast. I was like the second fastest kid in my grade. The first fastest kid was my friend, Mike, and who I actually had dated before because even in sixth grade, I had my first boyfriend in fourth grade and it was him, right, so whatever. And so um, he's fast, but I'm fast too, and I see my other person that I'm friends with, Brandon, signing this paper. I'm like, what the heck is going on? 
who brings a pen out to recess, right? I'm on my sixth grade brain. I'm 11, right? So I gun. I gun it after him. Like, I'm an athlete at that point. Like, I'm fast. I run, get him, tackle his ass to the ground, right? Like, nah, not today, bro. And I go and I, and I pull this paper and he tries to pull it back and it kind of rips. And I look at this paper and it says on it, if you don't like Michalina Eichel, sign here. Eight words that'll really like mm, hit you in that hard space. When you are Mickleen Eichel. When you're the like 30 people who signed it, it doesn't hurt you because you don't like her. But when you're her and you see this thing they've been trying to keep from you, it's like exponentially painful, right? So um, that one, that hurt very badly. It, it really, really did. And you feel betrayed in that moment and shocked and confused like why don't people like me what did i do wrong you know why would they do this like what have i done to make them go out of their way to write a petition about me like all these thoughts in your little 11 year old head um when you're super critically like thinking and you're reflective and all these things that even then i was so because i've always been a good student so um there were two names that weren't on it one was Mike, my friend, former boyfriend, and one was a, a girl named Shalane. And um, those were the only two. And that was really, really, really tough, right? I said this was a tough memory to start. It was a tough, tough memory. And so I don't even know if I told my mom about it. I do know that every time I hear the song Best Day by Taylor Swift, I like get choked up because, uh, you know, like my mom was always my rock in those moments. But it was a tough one. You know, it's tough when you are uh, a child who doesn't really belong or fit in and you find out that people really feel that way. So May 2001. We also that's in my social life, my personal life, um, my family is forced to move. So actually, for five months, we were essentially homeless because our landlord was selling our apartment in December of 2000. And we didn't have a place to live. My mom's a single mom. She worked at night. Like, my my dad didn't really pay a lot of child support. He paid like 300 bucks for each kid. Or for us total. It was like 100 each kid. Um, and so, we were not rolling in dough. So, we were like looking around for houses. And my mom was not optimistic. And we were living with my grandma, who... Um, I did not particularly get along with. There were some stories there. I almost told you that one, but I'll wait on that for another day because that's a, a a bit much. So um, and there wasn't really a lot of a hope that she had. And, you know, God is, is so good to us. But somehow, some miracle that I'll never understand, and neither will anyone, I guess, she, she, she gets this house. We get this house, our first house. You know, she still lives there. And... Uh, we were so excited. I mean, I ran upstairs. I was like, this room is mine. This, then my sister got, because we hadn't had our own rooms. You know, we didn't, we didn't have that when we were growing up. And uh, my mom, my mom has never had a room. She's always slept on the couch. And uh, and it used to be my, my sister and I shared a room. And then my brother had his little like closet off the room because we had this little tiny apartment. My mom would sleep on the couch or she'd sleep in the bed with my sister or like we, whatever. And, um, so we go upstairs, right? I mean, my life is shit at school as far as socially is concerned, not academically, but as far as social is concerned, like it's not great. Um, and this is also May 2001. And um, I live with my grandma, which we hate. We get this house. First night, we have no furniture. We have no nothing really. And we do have guinea pigs. We do have animals. We've always had animals. And um, the guinea pigs lived in my, my grandma's basement for, for five months. But um, so we go upstairs in what would be my room. We lay down this little afghan that we, uh, so it's like maybe my favorite childhood memory I'm sharing with you guys. Um, we lay down this afghan, which is like a kind of a if you know an afghan it's a, like a kind of a holy it's not really great for blankets honestly but we just we lay in this room together the four of us me my mom my brother my sister and we just like 
sleep in the peace of knowing we have a roof over our head. And it was this like really magical moment of like, wow, like we're, we're okay. Like we're here, we're okay. And it was also really a huge respite <clears throat> and saving grace for me because I was like, how am I going to show my face at school? Like, how am I supposed to go learn in an environment where I know nobody likes me? You know, how do you do that? And unfortunately, the move did lead to, I've dealt with that again and again and again and again. It's, a, it's a, ended up being a pattern that repeated seventh grade, ninth grade, freshman year of college. It just, it repeated. I didn't know, you know, but um, so which again are different stories for different days. But um, so we're in this this space and we're, we're together and we're safe and we're happy. And we end up moving that year, which it felt like such a huge, huge move. In actuality, it was seven minutes down the road. <laughs> like seven minutes from our old, our old apartment to, you had to come along the river, um, the Delaware River, to our new house seven minutes so it felt so big as an 11 year old but um looking back now it's like what this is like what not even a thing but it's fine so it really did feel monumental and it did really save me from going back into an environment where I was you know unloved unwelcomed and felt like a total outcast what ended up happening of course is because I had that trauma I never dealt with, right? Because I just shoved it down. Like, who cares about that hurt? I don't have to deal with it anymore. I'm just going to go forward. That pattern of shoving things down and moving on to the next became a sort of habitual thing in my life where I never learned to sit in my feelings. I never learned to sit in my trauma and feel it and heal it. And what I ended up doing, of course, was shoving it down and soldiering on. So what it manifested in, of course, is a, is a really successful human with a really broken personality and bad behaviors, right? So that was, um, again, that also another story for another day, because like I said, so many stories I could tell you, so much insight, you know, from, from the, the many, 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 many struggles, um, and also really great things. I mean, it was really great to have a house. It was really great to, to be safe and under one roof again. So it was a really nice moment. It was a really nice memory. Um, oh, of course, it was also, you know, really a crap memory too. But so that is, that is May 20, uh, 2001 memory coming out of two memories, I guess, coming out of May 2001. Um, so almost 20 years ago, May of 2021 will be 20 years that my mom has owned that home, which we still don't understand how the heck that happened. And 20 years since, um, you know, I had that really hurtful childhood memory, which again, I, at this point, I was like, well, they're kids. They don't know any better. Who cares? But when you're 11, you know, it's your whole world. You're like, oh my God. Um, and so, yeah. so I hope that you enjoyed that little story time. Um, if you want more stories, there's a whole wealth of them in here. Uh, and if you like what we're doing, then subscribe, tell your friends, the more subscribers we get, the more stories you get. So um, if you want these personal anecdotes, then we got to spread the word because at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of good stuff on this channel that'll help personal growth, personal um, choice of choosing life. And I do this so you don't end up in that broken place or nearly as broken place as, as I've been. You know, it's my hope that I can share out my truth and everyone can kind of hear it or grow from it or learn from it, not end up in that those dire situations that I have unfortunately found myself in time and time and time again, um, because I'm a hard study and I'm a hard learner. For as smart as I am, I'm not always the most socially adept. You know, I'm, there are people who call me Sheldon Cooper. I don't know that I'm Sheldon Cooper, but I don't know. Maybe I'm Amy Farabeller, you know. Anyway, um, I'll see you guys next time. I said I was going to post this on, on Thursday, but I was like, you know, it's Tuesday morning. I'm posting transformational Tuesday tips. Let's talk about my, my own personal transformation, you know, from, uh, from pain to, to purpose. So I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, there's more where that came from.